Today, it is day two of National Small Business Week, celebrated every year since 1963, recognizing the critical contributions of America's entrepreneurs and small business owners, a celebration of the American dream. And several key issues being debated in Washington right now could dramatically impact small businesses, to name a few, President Trump's tax plan and the Republicans' health care bill. Joining me now is the new administrator of the Small Business Administration, Linda McMahon. Linda, welcome. Thank you, Stephanie. It's great you, to be here. Thank you. You are out this week on this small business tour across the country. What's it all about? It is celebrating small businesses. You know, there are approximately 29 million small businesses, and almost half of all American employees are employed in small businesses. And it's the engine of our economy, it's the backbone of our economy. So I'm visiting different businesses in the different districts. SBA has 68 districts around the country. So today I'm in New York, tomorrow I'm in Indiana, uh, I'm, then I'm in Dallas on Thursday and Fresno on Friday. So it's a full week. We know the small business sentiment is up since the election. Many have said they were sort of strangled by the threat of regulation, but taxes matter. President Trump is looking to cut corporate taxes, but when you look at small businesses, when you really look at this bill, it's sort of the ultra rich who have their own finance arms, their own mom and pop uh, financial advisor, stockbroker, but most actually pay less than 15%. So for your average small business out there, how does the new tax plan really help them? Well, I can tell you what they're telling me. Uh, and when we had our kickoff yesterday in Washington and I had about 250 small businesses that we were talking to and without fail, they really talked about what a benefit the tax reduction could be for them. Where? To come Pardon me? If they're already only paying 15%, where's the benefit? No, but they are paying more than 15% because, you know, most of them have sub S corporations or LLCs, and that pass through is taxed at ordinary income rates. So if they have the 15%, uh, that's going to be more money in their pocket. And they've told me, hey, look, we'll spend that money on marketing dollars, on hiring new employees, and on expanding our businesses. When you look at health care, that's another issue. Small businesses, were, many were saying Obamacare was tough for them. They couldn't afford to pay their employees. When we look at the new health care bill, it could really cost a lot more, especially those who hire older workers. Now that you're going to be scaled by your age, some could have to pay 500% more. How do you weigh in on this? Should you weigh in on this in terms of health care reform? Because it matters so much to small businesses. Well, it does matter. And I'll tell you, when I have been out and visiting small businesses, in fact, when I ran for the Senate in Connecticut uh, in 2010, those small businesses would actually show me their premium bills that had doubled and sometimes tripled from the year before. So I think that we are going to have health care reform that is going to be beneficial to small businesses. I don't think it's going to raise their premiums. I think it's going to reduce their premiums. They, they want to be able to provide insurance for their employees and they can't afford to do it. Do we know that the current bill has to change though to satisfy them? Because when I look at the numbers, Small businesses could pay up to 500% more for older workers. So do you believe that the current amendments need to be changed again? Because that would really be discriminatory to older workers. It would say to small businesses, you just want to hire the young folks. Well, I think it remains to be seen what the health care bill is going to finally come out to be. I know it is the goal of the president clearly to make it much more beneficial to small businesses. When you look at the regulations that many have said are making it hard for their businesses to grow, are there specific ones that need to be changed? Because right now it's that sentiment. People are excited and President Trump has said, if you want to put a new regulation, I'm going to need you to get rid of two. Where? What is it that exactly is the roadblock? Well, I can tell you when I've talked to small business owners, it isn't necessarily any one particular regulation. It is the onerous amount of paperwork and compliance that has to go on. You know, a small business owner is often the CEO and the janitor, and they're doing everything. And they don't have a staff of accountants or lawyers to comply with these regulations. And it's just really tough for them. A lot of times, they are not being compliant because they don't even know what the regulation is. And I've talked to many small businesses that have been fined for things they didn't know about and didn't have an opportunity really to make it right. It was called instant fine. You pay now, you correct it, or you'll pay again. And so that's just not fair. 
Take me inside the White House. There's so much criticism. I mean, even in the last 24 hours, President Trump has said a lot of aggressive things, whether it's or, or things that didn't make sense, whether it's about Andrew Jackson, the president of the Philippines, calling Kim Jong, Jong un a smart cookie. You spend time in the White House with the president. What is he actually like? Because from our perspective, things seem pretty crazy right now. Well, I'm not actually in the White House all that often. Uh, SBA headquarters are you know, several blocks away <laughs> from the White House, and that's where I'm really focused. Uh, but yesterday, I was at the White House speaking to community bankers, and they are very excited about the potential of regulatory reform. And so are our small businesses, because they've not been able to have access to capital uh, during this, this time of regulatory reform, uh, during the time of Dodd-Frank. Their hands were tied, and what they told me was, you know, we know our customers better in the community. We know who we can take a risk on. Okay, it may look a little iffy over here, but he's got a great track record. When Dodd-Frank came in, they could not make those same kind of loans, and it did impact them. So SBA, part of what we do with the guarantee and loan programs is to make a lot more of those loans available. So, you know, we're seeing an increase in our loan portfolio. Businesses are growing. Uh, we, I think, about 56 thousand people we counseled last year and it was just amazing so it's uh, we're, we're really happy no it was million that we counseled last year all across the country there you go all right linda thank you so much hey there i'm chris hayes from msnbc thanks for watching msnbc on youtube if you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos